Dad, make sure uh, we talk to Fourth Service. Um, he just, you know, doesn't know the Lord as far as we know. Got to know the Lord before he dies. He's 88. Um, not in best of health, but, you know, God's brought him back three times because he hadn't received Jesus yet, you know. Let, let's hope there doesn't have to be a fourth. Well, I want to thank you all for praying for the boys, Mom. Because uh, she, she wanted to get it full time, and they did open it up. And I, and I uh, uh, you know, send a message to tell the church to pray for her. So I, I think that's a big answer to her. Wait, wait off for her. Because she's got full time to show benefits. And, and that. So that's, a, that's a always an answer to prayer. And I also I appreciate it. When uh, you know when I deal with students, and, and sometimes one is not getting get it, you know, and every day you have a situation, and then I had to change teaching methods. You know, and, well that's a lot of stuff. That's, and sometimes you got to deal with certain people a certain way because everybody's got their own personality. And I, I was thinking about how God deals with us. You know, because we're individuals, and He deals with us. He knows where our hearts at. He knows the way to reach us, and and he, and and I just was thankful that that just really opened up today because then everything just turned around for him and it was, uh, wow. it was a lot better. So I just thank the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that, um, Mike and I, a friend of ours from Choir First. Uh, long story: her husband's in prison right now. They've been having a hard time financially making it. Um, she's been having issues working because of the carpal tunnel stuff she's having. So she's um, got a disability hearing with the state. There. I think it's next month. Um, I asked her how she wanted me to, you know, how do, how do you want me to pray for you? Because, you know, I, I'd rather that she be healed of this, be able to live a life and work, but, you know, <coughs> just the God's will we got in this situation. I, I, I want her to be healed, but I think quite honestly because of my situation, she wants to on disability. Maybe she needs to be right now. I don't know. Sorry, this may be a little winded, but um, so I just want to say thank you to everyone who prays for Eric and I and our food ministry. Um, it's working because um, we got an invitation to go to Cedar Rapids tomorrow evening and um, there is a doctor, her name is Dr. Terry Walls, and um, she had MS, severe MS, to where she was confined to a motorized wheelchair. And uh, she decided to change her diet, and she did that, and within one year, she was bicycling on her bike 20 miles a day. Wow. Wow. Anyway, she's taking this class in Cedar Rapids last night and specifically asked for us and our products because she loves them so much. And um, it, it's just really kind of neat because I, I had an opportunity to meet her a year ago while we were in Cedar Rapids and um, we were demoing and I couldn't, we were so busy demoing I, I could only get glimpses of what she was doing and I wanted to meet her so badly. But uh, now I realize why I did not get to meet her that day, um, because this day had been chosen as the day that we would get to meet her, and uh, by her request instead of you know by mine. So that is a uh, very amazing turn of events, and um, we were also invited to go to this big. Uh, 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 I don't even know what to call it. It's like a two-day affair where you demo, and uh, it's in Minnesota. So now we're breaking state lines, which is even better. And um, the first night is for wholesalers, so restaurant people will be there, grocery stores will be there. Um, so that's another great opportunity to get our products out into Minnesota. Um, and then the next day is for um, you know the public, the general public. So. It's just a really fun, great opportunity, and um, as far as I can tell, there's nobody else who moved to our sauerkraut, so. <laughs> um, so we've already, you know, reserved that spot, so um, I just wanted to thank everybody for praying for us, and please don't stop, and uh, everything is, is, is really, uh, it's pretty amazing right now, so thank you guys. Amen. Praise God. Diane would like some prayers. She's going to have her eye appointment tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to have pictures of her. 
top of the cataract. That's wild. And we're just waiting for it to be approved. So, double fist in it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for that. Wish we had more of a fluid tripod. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. this one for four months so we're going to start instituting strip searches at our house just kidding um <laughs> no one go to suzanne's house <laughs> <laughs> just kidding um bad joke and um uh, anyway so he showed me sunday night and we were at the doctor monday morning and he was administrating the hospital and talking to infectious disease people and heart surgeons and cardiac surgeons and all this stuff and he's kind of turned into um Ripley's Believe It or Not at the hospital because they're shocked that he has no infection other than a small topical infection around the actual wound itself. There you go. They, they did an echocardiogram, like an internal esophageal echocardiogram, no infection around his heart, no infection anywhere in his body, he hasn't traveled <coughs> anywhere. Um, he swam in my brother's pool with an open wound in his chest and no All infection right. anywhere except for a little bit look. right around the wound. So it's a miracle, we're claiming a miracle. <coughs> Yeah. And, um, but because of the open wound, he does have to have his pacemaker removed on Friday. And it's a very risky procedure. He's got his pacemaker and the wires in there for 17 years. And so on uh, Friday, he'll be going, undergoing that procedure. We're just going to keep believing he's the miracle child that's going to become a new case study. Amen. They're bringing, they're bringing teens in to come look at this guy who waited four months. <laughs> and he somehow feels fine. You know, I feel fine. It doesn't mean I feel fine. It doesn't hurt. No problem. What's the big deal? He's a kid. Just give a quick disconnect. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right, well, let's go on and back to the Lord. Heavenly Father, yes, Lord. it's our good pleasure to come before you and bring the petitions of your people, Lord. We just ask that every day tonight, Lord, every blessing that you have, the answered prayer that's been shared here tonight, the needs that have been shared here tonight, you know every one of them. And we thank you that when we gather together and we, when we lay these prayer requests at your feet, we can rest in the knowledge that you have finished the work, Lord, that you have made a way for all of the answer to these prayers to be yes and amen. That the work that you did on the cross finished it all, Lord. You paved the way for healing. You paved the way for prosperity. You paved the way for reconciliation. You paved the way for an abundant life for all of us if we just put our hope and our trust in you. And we just ask you to have your hand on all of the members of this body, all of our friends and family, all of the people, that, all the names that were mentioned here tonight, Lord. Be with our pastor and Sally as they're not with us these this week and next, Lord. And just reach out to the north and the south and the east and the west and continue by your Holy Spirit to draw in the people that are meant to be here. With the names that have been mentioned, the people who want to be here but that can't through schedules and busyness and work and kids and whatnot. We ask that you just stop all those distractions, Lord, and that you make a way for the people that want to be in your house to come. And those that are searching, those that are hurting, Lord, that you would bring them in so that they would hear of you, Lord, to learn of your love, of your goodness, and your grace, and your mercy, that it's truly new every single morning. And to learn that their heavenly Father is a good, good Father. And it is your good pleasure, Lord, to pour out your love and your blessings. We gather here tonight, we come together to worship, Lord, to lift you up. We come together to hear your word tonight, to be encouraged by your word, to let our minds be renewed by the hearing of your word tonight. Be with every person, Lord. You know the needs of our hearts. You know the worries that run around our head, Lord. And we may we lay them all at your feet. May we just lay them all down for this brief period when we gather together, Lord, and lift you up and turn our eyes to you knowing, trusting that it is well, that it is well with our souls, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just a reminder that if you've got a cell phone with you tonight, please silence it or turn it off. And this Sunday, somebody who's not here, so we can show the slide, 
Uh, it's going to be turning 70, Mr. John Waltz. And um, so we decided, uh, talking to Sheila after church on Sunday, she's like, well, I'm just going to bring a cake. And Mike's like, well, I've got a grill. So I'm going to grab some hot dogs and we'll throw some hot dogs on. So it turned into a pot blessing. So um, anybody who wants to bring something to share, anybody who doesn't have to run away right after church service, please stick around and join us for some food and some fellowship um, and to celebrate John Wilson's 70th birthday. If you want to bring uh, uh, outdoor cherry stuff, we'll be growing probably out on the north side there. So we can get a little bit of fresh air downstairs, obviously. We're going to grill downstairs. <laughs> There'll be other food and refreshments. And I'm trying to decide, I'm, I'm bringing homemade ice cream, and I'm trying to decide if I'm going to take it the day before and bring it, or if I'm going to let, let, let it run out there the whole time, let's the patio, it's a little bit nice, so, anyway. We got cake and ice cream. There you go. Uh, financial peace. Um, I know I had to miss Monday, but I know Michael's been there for both sessions, um, and it's been fantastic. I know I really enjoyed the, the lessons, and I'm looking forward to the peace. All right. Um, one other announcement that we will add. Um, we have picked a date for our next women's conference. Um, it will be uh, Saturday, November 11th. That is Veterans Day, my dear husband. So, um, I'll be here. That's all right. It'll be good for me, but... So Saturday, um, November 11th, uh, we're going to do um, a women's conference. We already confirmed our speaker from the Garden Gate She's Ministry. Coming? She's coming. Oh, She's coming. My yeah, so they already talked to her. She's happy to come and speak and share about her ministry. So that relationship is being forged. Um, and I think that um, after some discussions, um, I think we need more fellowship time. I think last time it was too much formal time. So we'll kind of follow the same format. We'll have speakers in the morning, we'll have worship speakers in the morning, lunch, and then after lunch, just going to be crafts. Um, we'll do handing gifts, crafts, and whatnot. And she also has um, something that she wants to do after lunch downstairs that will involve everyone who is coming. Okay. And um, it's really kind of interesting, so um, I think it'll be a really great introduction to branching out and doing the crafts or whatever it is we're going to do down there. So yeah. She's really excited about coming. She's really excited about sharing her story. So. Perfect. And what's her name again? Cindy? Garden Gate Ministries. Yes. <laughs> uh, I want to say it's Cindy. Cindy? Cindy, Cindy. Brenda? Brenda Long. Brenda. Not even close. Thank you. Not even close. Brenda. Yeah, that's really close. <laughs> yeah. Brenda Long. Yes, Brenda Long. So Brenda will be joining us after that. So. Before I forget, um, Tom Stammen uh, had a venue in the area that uh, fell through. Uh, he, him and Pastor talked, and uh, Pastor opened the doors September 26th, which is a Tuesday evening at uh, 6.30. He's going to have this facility open. Uh, if anybody wants to come uh, help worship that night or uh, just spend the time with Tom, uh, pray about it, and uh, we'll formulate something. Maybe an opportunity for this uh, uh, fellowship to minister to a different group of people that we didn't see before. So. Can you share anything about the weekend that came out? Um, do you have the words? Um, so... It started Friday night. So Friday night at Eastern Gate House of Prayer, uh, the month before, it was very much a prayer meeting. And the worship was very much secondary. Um, we had a lot fewer people um, this month, but it was very much more about the worship. Um, and I will say, it kind of all started, um, I think it was honestly a warm-up. I think, right. I think Roberto was literally warming up, playing his guitar, and it just resonated in the spirit, and it blossomed into a 45-minute song that was birthed. Um, maybe three songs, I'm not even really sure. Um, yeah. We worshipped for an hour and a half and did three songs. Um, and so it was a time of, I would say, renewal for the worship. It was a different kind of worship. It wasn't the written... You know, it's definitely spontaneous worship. Mm -hmm. It was definitely warfare. Um, definitely um, things were changing. I'd say there's a different realm, I guess. And then Saturday, uh, and there was a word that came forth. I think it was Wednesday, actually. The word came forth Wednesday before um, when he was talking about the burn. I saw, they're talking about the drum circle. 
And when I was talking about the drum circle, I saw very distinctly, I, I, I saw what I, what, what I thought was the wall of Jericho, where they were playing their drums, and they were marching around the wall. And as they were playing their drums, the walls came tumbling down. And as I started to type it, to share it um, with the person that does uh, the Kingdom House of Prayer, um, the Lord basically said that we been waiting for someone to pull Terry, and that those strongholds were coming down. Um, and, that this was, and, 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 and I didn't and I didn't know until after I'd already seen all this that their theme was in, in his presence, right. like practicing the presence kind of, kind of thing. Um, and that the Lord was waiting for someone to tarry and to keep worshiping until he showed up. And when he shows up, those strong huts, the walls come tumbling down. And so, um, and then you put up some confirming words that were shared um, somewhere else. And then, um, so we, we the, some of our members, um, you and James, Mike and James, participated in the drum circle. Yeah. And then by the time we got there, um, there was a, a, a professional guitar player, and then he became Christian. We talked afterwards. He was a guitar player first, but became Christian. He actually joined our worship team and started playing. And I was talking to everybody afterwards, and I was like, the Lord is pulling something out of us musicians. I've never played like I played Friday night as a bass player. I've played my whole life. I've played since I was nine, and I've never played like I played Friday night. There was something that rose up, and it continued Saturday. And he and, and Rick was saying he'd never heard this guy playing like that either. And there was something happening. And this, he didn't even know us. We were, I didn't even know his name. And we were playing for the Lord. The Lord was birthing this new worship and this new sound. It was... It was fantastic. His name, um, his name is John Taylor. Yeah, John Taylor. So um, he was just thankful to you know jump in and I'm like it was fantastic, you know. Yeah. Um, and so there, um, I, I would say the instruments became more important than the voices. I don't know if you felt that way. I felt like the instruments were. The mantle was going back and forth between them. Yeah. Because there was a lot of declaration going on. Yeah. And then the, and I called it out at least once, Salem, mm -hmm. which the instruments took over like years. Yeah. And Mike had on his uh, construction vest, which I thought was awesome, because the walls were kind of like, you know, I get hit by debris. Rick Arrowwood did put the, uh, our session on, uh, and I shared it on my status, so it yeah. is on there. Yeah, when it really started to shred, that's he has that um, portion on there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it was fantastic, and um, and it was the first time that I had seen the pastor from that church completely engaged with Mike after our session too. Um, there was a group of men outside when I came out that were just um, fellowshipping in a way that I had never seen before. So it was pretty, it was fantastic. Yeah. It was fantastic. It, it was interesting to find out you've been in Teen Challenge and you used to go to First Assembly also. Yeah. Many, many, many years ago. Yeah. So I feel like there were connections in the spirit and the bridge building going on. Yeah. Um, definitely. Praise God. Definitely. We'll probably do it again next month or the month after. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a once a month situation. And it's always right after uh, Easter Day, mm -hmm. so it kind of dovetails one into the other. Mm -hmm. And as Rick Arrowwood was standing right over there, uh, one night that he did come, there's like mm -hmm. 25 of us here. And uh, he, he stated that uh, uh, Eastern Gate gets to see what's happening in this region first because we see it coming in from the east. And uh, he said it, not us. Mm -hmm. So just for someone to be of a different venue to come in here and see that and say that, was, praise God. Mm -hmm. so take a look at this. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Ron, do you want to come take an offering tonight, please? Mm -hmm.
Thank you. 
church, are the king's keys to my kingdom. Here, church, are the keys to my kingdom. What will you do? So tonight, Lord, we worship you. We choose to worship you. We choose to gather in this house of prayer, in this safe place, in this little church on the east side of Des Moines. We choose to gather together in the name of Jesus Christ to worship you and to listen to your word, Lord. Blessed with all that you are, all that you are, and all that you will be, Lord. And receive this as sacrifice of praise in Jesus' name. Around and addressing these things, 
And that's the challenge, right? To address these things, but to be spiritually minded, that's the challenge. The enemy is cunning. He knows how to throw us off track, how to get us to turn our heads to the left or the right. I think I did that statement right. <laughs> How to get us to take our eyes off of Jesus, to look at ourselves, to look at our situations, and to look at our loved ones. That's his favorite trick, right? To get us not even to think about ourselves, but the, those that we love. But we need to be diligent, disciplined, focused, taking back our thought life, casting down vain imaginations, and turning our eyes back to Jesus. Yes. Philippians 4, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 13. This is just a reminder of encouragement. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I like to say I can do all things, right? I can do all things, but that's not the whole verse. Right. I can do a lot of things, but I can't do all things. Mm -mm. But when I when I I, I, caught, I caught myself the other day saying I can do all things, I can do all things, but I didn't finish the verse. Through Christ which strengthens me. Because I'll tell you, if we're not in Christ, we get weary. And if we find ourselves getting weary, we have to stop and say, am I really in Christ? Because the enemy likes to get us in ourselves. We might be doing it before Christ, but it's not the same as being in Christ. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Another favorite trick of the enemy is fear, right? Isaiah 41, 10. Fear thou not. How many times does the Bible say fear not? It's a lot. I don't know the exact number. I didn't Google it, but it's a lot. Fear not. What scripture is this again? Uh, this is Isaiah 41, verse 10. Okay. Sorry. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Does that leave us any doubt? That he's not going to leave us flailing on our own. He's not going to leave us dependent upon our own strength. When fear comes, that's our first clue that we're not in Christ. That we're not putting on the mind of Christ. That we're not putting on the armor of God. So if you want to stay focused, like I want to stay focused, I have a list of things that if we do them, God has promised me, whether we do one of them, all of them, two of them, three of them, if we do these things, we reject the enemy. We turn away wrath. We keep our heart healthy. And he gives us a life worth living if we choose to do these things. And most importantly, these things turn our eyes and our focus back on Jesus faster and more completely than anything else we can try to do on our own. So first on the list is first. Let's put first things first. <laughs> Isn't he cute? <laughs> I giggle when I wrote something. I'm like, no, oh, Lord, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> so number one first is to put the first things first. James 4, 7. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We know that, but how do we resist the devil? Put first things first. If I'm looking at Jesus, I'm not talking to the devil. I'm not engaging with the devil. The devil can only come at me through my flesh. He can't come at me through my, he can't come at me through my mind. He can, how many of you know that you have thoughts and you're like, where did that come from? Right. Where did that come from? We don't have to own the thoughts that fly through our brain. I think of this brain as like an airport. Planes are coming and going. <laughs> They're coming and going, but I get to choose who comes in and lands, right? I choose who comes in and lands. Uh, and Matthew 6 on uh, chapter 6, verse 33. Resist the devil. Resist, don't even bother. It's not our job to fight him. It's our job to resist him. Right? He comes. We know the word. We know how to, we know, and we'll, we'll get through the rest of it. But, okay. Resist him. Resist him. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So I explained righteousness in Sunday school as a white coat. Because these kids don't like to wear white, right? Kids don't like to wear white because they get dirty. So Jesus gave us a white coat. And we can't get it dirty. It's impossible to get it dirty. He gave it to us. Can't get it dirty. 
that doesn't compute for a child. How can I wear white? And I, you can sit in a mud puddle and your white coat can't get dirty. That's what righteousness is. You can't out sin righteousness. You can't get righteousness dirty. Right? Come on. You can't. You can't. It's his righteousness. Right. I can do whatever I want and I can be stupid and I can wallow in mud, but I can't get his righteousness dirty. I can't get any mud in his righteousness. Right. I can wallow in the mud all day long and I can live in a pig pen and I can eat filth and live in filth. But his righteousness is perfect. Yes, it, is it is that garment that we wear. I think of it as a garment. Put on his righteousness like that white coat and wear it. Mm. It is mud repellent. Mud can't get on you. Hallelujah. Yeah, it can. Like, I don't know about you ladies, but the idea of something white that I can't get dirty thrills me. <laughs> no coffee stains. No coffee stains. No ketchup stains. I'm like, everything my son owns. I mean, everything's good to ketchup. Hey, no blood stains. You got boys that are doing what, whatever. Let's watch where you're going there. Ketchup stains. Sorry. Well, anyway. Um, Hit all the at home. Righteousness. <laughs> righteousness. Let's not be distracted. Focus. <laughs> First. It's a coat that we wear. It's a garment that we wear that we can't get dirty, that we can't undo, that we can't take off. We can't even take it off. He gave it to us. He said, I give you my righteousness. Mm. All you have to do is receive it. He doesn't ever want it back. He gave it to us. It's his, though. It's his coat. It's his magic special coat. That's yes. how I explained it to the kids. I thought it was kind of funny. So if we will seek to just wear his garment and be in him and to look at him and seek those things first, I put on my coat first thing in the morning, all those things come with it. All of the things of the kingdom come with it. Okay, and this one's for my husband in the back. Can I get an amen, honey? Number two, let it go. Okay. Start theme, yeah. 2017, yeah. all over the house. Every kind of picture that says, let it go, I buy it. It's little, big, everyone has in the bathroom, a big sign, let it go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> we carry so much baggage. Okay, so I'm going to tell myself, we've just got on vacation. I need a whole suitcase to myself for three days. <laughs> I carry a lot of baggage, <laughs> right? But as people, we carry a lot of baggage. We carry a lot of stuff that we don't want to let go. We carry hurts. We carry offenses. We carry, oh, we carry so much. Church, we are lugging around. Big old suitcases full of stuff. But the Lord says, will you just come lay it at my feet? Will you just come lay it down and let me give you my peace? Will you just lay it down and let me give you? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes. My burden is light. Shelly had a revelation. I'll finish Shelly. Light. Shining light. How much does light weigh? Shining light weighs nothing. His burden is light. Shine your light. That's the burden that we bear. To shine his light. Mm. But we can't unless we're willing to let it go. We can carry you can't you can't put on the coat and carry around big suitcases behind you. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work. You gotta pick. You wanna find your coat or you wanna carry your bags? Right? So Let's start with some scripture. 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17. This is probably one of the first things. This, is, this was my revelation at baptism that the Lord gifted me with. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I had an experience in my baptism where I didn't know anything. I was innocent. I didn't know a lot of charismatic ways. I didn't know anything. I threw my hands up. And I was probably supposed to talk in tongues. I didn't know what that was. But I, there was like this lightning that I felt go in through my tips of my fingers, down out to the toes, and back up again. And I knew I was different. Woo! My DNA was different. Come on. I'm telling you, when we receive Jesus Christ, we are different. We are a new creature. We don't have the same DNA. And then the second thing that he taught me as a new believer was the totality of his forgiveness. Right? It's that empty room you guys have heard me talk about. I walked in, all my sin was in there, and I walked in and Jesus was behind me, and I was remembering all of the junk. He walked in behind me, lit the room up, it was empty. He looked at me, you're the only one that even remembers. Mm. The stuff that we carry around, either towards offenses towards other people or the or the guilt and the shame that we carry, we're the only one that remembers it. 
The people that offended us, do you think they carry it around? Probably not. They probably don't even remember. Mm. They probably don't even remember. The only thing that is hurting is us. And those are the things that we give power to. You are a new creation. You want to ask God for forgiveness? He says, for what? I don't even know what you're talking about. It's as if it never happened. It's as far as the east is from the west. When he died, it was all sin. Past, present, future. All sin. He doesn't see sin. He sees Jesus Christ. I don't know what you're talking about. Lord, forgive me. For what? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. I don't know, Sheila, were you there the night after the women's Bible study talking about the hot potato? Yeah. Hot potato. Worries and fears, right? Worries and fears are hot potatoes in our life. When someone throws you a hot potato, are you going to hang on to it? No, you get rid of it as soon as possible. You ever played a game of hot potato with your kid? If you are stuck holding a hot potato, you lose. <laughs> Worries and fears are like hot potatoes. When they, someone throws them at you, when the enemy throws them at us, when the world throws them at us, when people we love throw them at us, you get rid of them as soon as you possibly can, because they will hurt you and burn you. And where do you throw them? Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Remember, a long time ago, I did a worry basket. We wrote down, what are the things that we just carry, those hot potatoes that we can't let go, that keep coming back, that keep coming back, that we can't let go, that we hold on to it, continue to burn us and hurt us. Write them down. Put them at the, feet, at the feet of the Lord for once and for all and let it go. Let it go. Mm -hmm. Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. A powerful promise from the Lord to us. And we know that all things, all things work together for good to them that yeah. love God, to them who are called according to yes, His Lord. Purpose. You have all been called by name. He picked every single one of you for this time to be here tonight, to be part of this body, to be in Des Moines, Iowa for this age. Yes, you are Lord. hand selected. And everything that happens, bad decisions we make, we get off the path, we get on the path, it doesn't matter. Everything that we do, He will work for good. He has seen the end from the beginning. He is not fretting. He makes a way where there is no way. Right. And he uses our, our, our you know, human nature, our, our mistakes, he uses all of it to teach us and perfect us. And for his glory, yes, he uses Lord. all of it for his glory. Yes, Lord. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And I already kind of shared this one, but Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. That sounds glorious. Rest for you. Like bone deep weary, rest for your souls. Amen. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Light has no weight to it. Let your light so shine before men. Right? Amen. But we have to come to Him. We have to be willing to let go. If we bring our worries and our troubles to Him, and then we pick them back up when we leave our prayer closet, what good did it do? Mm -hmm. And we do it. Those things come back around. They come back around, but we choose. Are we going to hot potato them back? Are we just going to keep putting them in the worry basket? Because those thoughts come. Those circumstances come. Things are real. I'm not saying they're not real, but how we handle to choose them when we come, when they come to us, are those planes landing? Or are they passing through? You know? Hebrews 12, 15. Hebrews 12, 15. Because here's what happened when those hot potatoes, when those worries, those fears, those offenses, when they come and they stay, this is what happens. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Fail of the grace of God. How do you fail the grace of God? By leaning in your own. Right? By, by not relying on the grace. By trying to do it yourself. By taking up your own burden, taking up your own yoke and, try, yoke and trying to do it yourself. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. A root of bitterness rarely stays in one person. 
without infecting the waters of those around them. That's, I don't know. That's um, true. Bitterness comes from so many things. And I'm going to say some things, and I, and I want you to know my heart. I, I, I love everyone here, and I don't want to offend anybody. I'm not, I, I'm not directing this to anybody. But there is a victim mentality that we have got to stop as the church. There's a victim mentality that, poor me, it's always, everybody's always out to get me, and nothing ever works for me, and I, it, you know, why, 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 why me, why me, why me? Come on. It is so focused on self, and it is so focused on clinging to a reason for our personal unhappiness, and it blames something for our unhappiness. Rather than us letting go of the things that make us unhappy and removing them from our lives and asking the Lord to remove them. Harbored resentment, even from someone who hurt you, and you have a right to be upset and hurt, if you hang on to those, those bitter the waters of your spirit. And when you bitter the waters of your spirit, you taint your whole spirit. And um, anybody that wants to talk to me about that, I'm not going to go into any more, but... If you think that there is a root of bitterness that is tainting the waters in your life, I want you to pray that God take this root of bitterness from my life. And I want you to pray that he restores the oil of gladness, the oil of Gilead, for this root of bitterness. That joy will heal the root of bitterness. But it takes joy to, to take its place. And if you are joy-filled, you have no one to blame. You can't be a victim. If you're full of joy, you can't be a victim. Come on. There's no one to blame. Because you know what? I'm not going to go into that. But anyway, I'm going to say that. The Lord wanted me to talk, and I highlighted it, a root of bitterness. And so please pray. If things are not as you feel they should be in your life, pray. And just ask the Lord to reveal you in the scripture study the root of bitterness. Come on. And pray, and, and, and pray specifically about the oil of healing. Um, moving on to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. This is another, another promise. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. You're not experiencing anything that we all don't go through. Right. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Excuse me but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that he may be able to bear it. Now, I will tell you the key during these times is to find someone to pray with you. Because these times happen for all of us. Temptation comes. Trials and tribulations come. And I'm telling you, if you, if you need a partner to get through it, you find somebody. You find somebody to pray with you. You find somebody to believe with you. You find somebody that can help you and be your partner through it as well as, obviously, Jesus Christ through prayer. He has promised us nothing will happen that we can't handle. There is always a way. Mm -hmm. Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14. And this is going to be the transition to our next portion. Uh, Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I, I, I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. I am reaching for what has already got a hold of me. I am pursuing what has already pursued and captured me, is what he's saying. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or attained, but this one thing I do, one thing, right, one thing, forgetting those things which are behind, let it go, it's easy. To forgive, it's very hard for us to forget. Uh -huh. He says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before us, <clears throat> I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Yes. If we are looking around, if we are looking behind us, time to let it go and turn and look forward and start moving forward. Because if you're moving forward, the enemy can't mess with you. As a promise from the Lord. So the next section, first things first, let it go, run for us, run. <laughs> How many of you know there's two kinds of running, right? There's two kinds of running. I'm running from something or I'm running to something. And the Lord says, run for us, run. 
Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Now, I am praying that the church has a renewal of discernment because I believe there are things that have tainted the church that have snuck in through the oh, side yeah. doors yeah. that have become idols. Yeah. And it is very it, it is not pleasing to the Lord. So anything anything other than Jesus Christ. Period. Amen. Anything other than Jesus Christ, run for us to run. Mm -hmm. If you can't find it in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and if you can't find three witnesses, run for us, run. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. <clears throat> well, this is when the bad guys were chasing them, right? Run for us, run! <laughs> Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, Charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Okay? Who are we running with? Right? Flee our youthful lusts. Well, that's a lot of different things. That I mean, that can be anything that rises above and becomes more important than our relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. It does. It, it, it can be harmless things. It can be, you know, kid things. It can be hobbies. It can be whatever it can be. But anything that rises in I would say in your heart or your mind, right? Those are the things that we have to run for us from, right? And pursue righteousness. These are the things we're running towards, right? We're pursuing, we're, we're moving, we're actively engaging and moving ahead, pursuing righteousness, faith, love, and peace. And isn't it coincidental that all of those things are found in Jesus Christ and they're gifts that he gives us? How coincidental is that? But when we strive to attain Him, to focus on Him, to pursue those things, to pursue the Scriptures, to pursue people who are pursuing them, to um, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart, it's so important the company we keep. It's so important the company we keep. And there's times we can control, and there's times we can't. Right. Right. And um, I'm just telling you that there's times when I just I pray for you to have discernment. When you need to run for us, run. And we need to speak to the mountain, and that mountain needs to be removed. And I'm telling you, there's some people in our lives that are mountains that need to be cast into the sea. And that's what uh -huh. I'm going to say about that. <laughs> okay, the other kind of running. Running towards uh, 1 Corinthians 9.22. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Sorry. 24. 1 Corinthians 9.24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run, Forrest, run, that you may obtain. Mm -hmm. we got to get up and move. we yep. got to get up and move. Yep. We have to get up and move. If we sit down and get comfortable, we're not pursuing. Right. And we're not, I don't read anywhere in here where comfort is a gift of the Spirit. Is comfort a gift of the Spirit? He is the comforter because he's calling us to be uncomfortable. We need the comforter because he's calling us to the uncomfortable things. Pursuing is not always comfortable when, it, when it's something that you're not gifted in. It's, it's something that's outside of your comfort zone. But we've had testimony after testimony that when we are faithful in the things that are outside of our comfort zone, therein lie the greatest blessing. Yes. The flavor and the zest of life. We are called to an abundant life. Come on. I don't see much abundance. Come on. In my own life sometimes, and in everyone's. The church is called to the abundant life. Mm -hmm. So it's time for us to get up and run the race. Here All of us. Amen. Okay, so Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. And just like the marathons, I don't know if anybody's ever worked a race where you hand out water and there's people cheering, there's people cheering on the sidelines, run for us, run! We have a great cloud of witnesses watching us and cheering us on. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay it aside every weight. Let it go! And the sin which doth so easily beset us, let it go! And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but patience is not my favorite. <laughs> I don't know about you, but patience is not my favorite. But to run a race, to run a marathon, you have to set a pace. Yep. You can't go as fast as you can go right out. You have to be patient and wise, right? And there's a race that requires patience because running a race sometimes means waiting, right? Running 
and running a race and getting there sometimes means waiting, which requires patience. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I pray for the church to know the difference, when to flee and when to run the race. Because right? I think sometimes we're running a race when we should be fleeing, and we're fleeing when we should be sitting down and running a race. First um, John 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Yep. Very well-meaning false prophets. Very not well-meaning false prophets. Do we know the difference? And does it even matter? False is false and truth is truth. Right. We have got to know the difference. You know, and, and, I, and I think we've probably all heard the same, but... FBI, how they train their people to find counterfeit, they don't study the counterfeits, they study the authentic. And they know the authentic inside and out. And if it doesn't match exactly like the authentic, it's fake. Right. We don't need, you know, prayer conferences. I mean, you know what I mean? We know truth. Our spirits know truth when we hear it. And if something doesn't sit quite right, search it out. You know, search it out. We have tools, we have each other. That's why we have the body, to ask and to seek. Um, okay, moving on. Love one another. When we act in love, the enemy can't harm us. But now part of loving is loving ourselves. Why is that so hard for us as Christians to love ourselves and to let Jesus love us? Why is that so hard for us sometimes? And I don't know if it's just because the world has raised us that we have to earn love, that we have to earn all of these things by being and doing. When Jesus said, he just loved, right? He gave himself when we were yet sinners. When we were yet sinners, he died for us. And Romans 12, 9, let love be genuine. Let love be genuine. Not false hugs and pats in the back. I'm not, I'm not, I love our hugs and our greetings. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, how many times? Yeah, good to see you. Moving on. <laughs> genuine love. Caring for people, right? You know, genuine love. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to that which is good. Ephesians 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Being kind. What is wrong with our world that it's so rare to find someone that just will be kind? Kind. It's not hard to be kind. It's just not. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Run for us, run! <laughs> right? Bitterness, wrath, and anger. Those things hurt us. Those are the things that can take root in us when we're unaware. And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Yes. We have got to learn to love one another, church. To be kind to one another. Not just in the church, but to everybody. It is so rare in our day and age to just see simple kindness. It makes the news when people are kind. That's how rare it is. Like, it's a news event. You hear on the, the, in the internet, they got some, you know, Channel 13 special about it. Just because someone was kind. That's how rare it is. Uh, next, be thankful. When we are thankful, when we are grateful, the enemy can't touch us. He can't. Because when I'm thankful, it means what I have is enough. Right? It means I'm not looking out here. It means I'm looking to him, and I'm thanking him for his blessings. <coughs> Being thankful. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. If I'm thankful, am I worried? If I'm thankful, am I anxious? No, I'm thankful. I'm grateful. If our hearts are truly thankful, all of those things just go away. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. 
And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I need some of that peace that passes understanding. And Jesus mm -hmm. keeps my heart and my mind. He does it. Mm -hmm. Then I don't even have to do it. Amen. If I can just stay thankful and grateful, mm -hmm. He does all that. Because the enemy can't come at you. He cannot when we have a thankful heart. Amen. Next, hold your peace. We give our peace away so easily. We have such short fuses anymore. Little things. Um, John 14, 27. Hold your peace. Your peace is a gift. It's a gift from Jesus Christ. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Again, if fear comes, run for us, run. And then we just pray. Give me your peace, Lord. You already gave it to me. I, I gave it away. I lost it. Give me your peace. And immediately, when we have that peace, when we hold that peace, nothing can shake us. Nothing can distract us. We are focused because it's His peace. And in order for us to have His peace, we are connected and we are one with Him. Mm -hmm. Count it all joy. This is one of my favorite Mark McBride messages that he probably ever preached here. I don't even know if everybody knows who that is. But um, James chapter 1, and I have it in the Message Bible. Count it all joy. When diverse trials and tribulations come, don't be surprised. Let it do its work. When trials come, they do a work in us. And if we will be patient and let it do its work and run the race and let it do its work instead of fleeing, right? Because we flee from the trials when the trials can actually do some good work in us. It's a gift if we will allow it and look at it as a gift. Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that, that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature, well-developed, not deficient in any way. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. You'll get his help and won't be condescended to when you ask for it. Ask boldly, <coughs> believing without a second thought. People who worry their prayers are like, are like wind-whipped waves. Not worries, prayers, right? Don't think you're going to get anything from the Master that way, adrift at sea, keeping all your options open. Jesus is it. He is the only answer. When the down-and-outers get a break, you cheer for them. And when the arrogant rich are brought down to, the, to their size, you cheer. Prosperity is as short as is, is as short-lived as a wildflower, so don't ever count on it. You know that as soon as the sun rises, pouring down its scorching heat, the flower withers. Its petals wilt, and before you know it, that beautiful face is a barren stem. Well, that's the picture of a prosperous life. At the very moment everyone is looking on in admiration, it fades away to nothing. Excuse me. Anyone who meets a testing challenge head-on and manages to stick it out is mighty fortunate. For such persons loyally in love with God, the reward is life and more life. Don't let anyone under pressure to give in to the evil say, God is, excuse me, God is trying to trip me up. God is impervious to evil and puts evil in no one's way. The temptation to give in to evil comes from us and only us. We have no one to blame but the leering seducing flare-up of our own lust. Lust gets pregnant and has a baby. Sin. Sin grows up to adulthood and becomes a real killer. So, my very dear friends, don't get thrown off course. Every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. The gifts are rivers of light cascading down from the Father of light. There is nothing deceitful in God, nothing two-faced, nothing fickle. He brought us to life using the true word, showing us off as a crown of all of his creation. Amen. So, count it all joy. Faith under pressure. Are we ready for our faith life to be exposed? Right? That's the challenge. 
Um, two, two left and we'll, and I'll wrap up for tonight. Worship while you wait. Patience is not my favorite. Worship is my favorite. So, let's combine the two. <laughs> Worship while you wait. Worship while you wait. He is worthy. He is worthy of our worship, no matter what is going on around us, no matter what is going on in us, no matter what. He is worthy. He is good. He is good. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 and 9. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. My grace is sufficient. If we ask and we speak to the mountain, and if we ask our Father and the mountain remains, we worship. Because his grace is sufficient. If the trials that beset us come, we worship while we wait for them to pass. And we don't have to worship alone. We worship together. That is something that we must never forget. We are not alone. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. We know these. There's a time for everything, right? There's a season for everything. And if we rush it, we miss it. If we hurry through, we miss it. If we ignore it and don't like that one, we miss it. There's blessings in every season. There's lessons in every season. What chapter? I'm sorry. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. There you go. There's a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time for this, a time for that. A season for everything. And we want to rush through to the seasons we like and pick. And we miss the blessings of the season we're in. Right? Worship while we wait. If it's not our favorite season, then we worship while we wait for the next season to come. And last, practice makes perfect. Right? Practice makes perfect. Finally, brethren, Philippians 4, 8 through 9. Practice makes perfect. Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Focus on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. So we are to think on these things, and we're to do the things that we've seen Jesus do. Right? Amen. Practice makes perfect. So, when the enemy comes, when distractions come, we remember to focus, right? We focus on him. We get our bearings, not to the left, not to the right, not behind us, letting it go, right? We go through. Right? First, first things first, let it go. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> Beat that one to death. Love one another, including ourselves. Be thankful. Hold your peace. Count it all joy. Worship while you wait. And practice makes perfect. Amen. We do one, all, any of these. It's a promise from the Lord that we are in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. My, my wife's breaking the pew.